Good evening, Creed. Welcome to the Mystery Playhouse. just heard the first scene of tonight's story, entitled Challenge to the Listener, written by Hugh Pentecost, and featuring two of your favorite radio stars, Richard Widmark and Everett Sloan. In it, you will meet two men, one the killer, the other a detective assigned to track him down. Now, the author, Hugh Pentecost, has deliberately avoided identifying the two men, and all the facts are given. Nothing is concealed. So let's see if you can spot the killer and successfully meet the challenge to the listener. Our story begins in the lobby of a summer hotel in the mountains just a short distance from New York. The desk clerk and another man are listening to the radio. And now here is the latest word on the Nancy Bradford murder. When questioned in his office late yesterday, Police Commissioner Henley had nothing new to... Hey, why? Well, why'd you turn off the radio, Bert? Because you're going to drive yourself nuts, Pop. You've got this Nancy Bradford case on the brain. Oh, my gosh, I, I, I think you'd be interested in the murder. You a cop and all. Look, I'm not a cop. I'm just a house dick. And you're not a cop either. You're just a desk clerk. Now, leave them matters for the police. But, Bert, uh, I have excuse a... Excuse me, huh? please. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Any mail for me? Name's Hartman. Jerry Hartman. Uh, let me see. Uh, H, H. Uh, no, sir. Oh. Well, thank you. Uh, papers just come in at 11 o'clock this morning, Mr. Hartman. Complete story on the Bradford murder. Want a paper? Well, I... Uh, Special oh. supplement. Complete story. All right, I'll take one. Here. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Now, what was I saying, Burke? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got a hunch the killer's up in the mountains around here. At least the cops think he is. Yeah? Why? Well, I heard that we got a plain clothes man staying right here in this hotel. Who told you that? Oh, just heard, that's all. One of the maids told me she saw a revolver in one of the rooms. Good night. That don't prove nothing. Proves plenty to me. Look here. In the paper it says that the killer left two pine needles at the scene of the crime. We got plenty of pine trees around here. Good morning. Morning. It's nearly 12.30. <laughs> well, I must have slept late. Compliment to your beds here. Uh, any mail for me? Doyle. Huh? Doyle? No. No, Mr. Doyle. Oh, thanks. By the way, what does the paper say about the weather today? I was thinking of getting in a little fishing this afternoon. Well, the paper says it's clear and sunny. But my rumor says tells me it's going to rain. <laughs> well, I'll take a chance after lunch anyway. Now, Bert, is he the plain clothes man? Huh? Eh? Now, don't tell me he ain't taking you into his confidence. You a cop, too. I'm not a cop. Pop, you must have been hitting that rheumatism medicine pretty hard this morning. I've never seen you so worked up. Well, I have a feeling there's going to be plenty of excitement around this place. And I'm going to find out just what goes. Yeah, okay, Pop. Listen, I'm going to tell you this, because if I don't, you'll nose around till you mess things all up. There is a plainclothes detective here from New York. What? I Why? tell you... Oh. And there is a possibility that the Nancy Bradford murderer is here. Holy mackerel. The detective took me into his confidence because he figured he might need my help. Now, will you keep this all to yourself? Murderer here? Well, what do you know? So does that Doyle fella? He's fat. Paper says... The paper says, and I quote, the doorman of Nancy Bradford's hotel described the killer as a tall, short, fair, dark, fat, thin man wearing a gray snap brim hat, blue-tinted sunglasses, and a tweed topcoat in July. In other words, the description of the killer given by the doorman is worthless. Well, I don't know. Check that Hartman fella. He's thin. And fat. No, no, no. Mr. Doyle, he's fat. Oh, Pop, forget the whole business. Well, the paper also says 
that the killer must have been crazy or something to beat her to death the way he did. So long. Where are you going, Bert? I'm going in to get my lunch. Oh, Mary, you got a table for me? Oh, it's just to that any place to see empty, Jim. I'll take your order in a minute. Waitress. Oh, waitress. That man wants you, Mary. Yeah, I see. Yes, sir. Are you ready for your dessert now? <laughs> oh, I never take dessert with my lunch. I'm too fat already. Oh, you taste very good today. No, I'll just have coffee. Coffee? Okay, I'll get it right away. Now, uh, wait. Yeah. Do you know uh, everybody here at the resort? Well, not everybody. It's... Over at that table by the window, uh, that man reading the newspaper. Well, oh, the, the thin man with the blonde hair? Yeah, well, that's right. Do you know him? Uh, no, sir. You see, over the fort, we have quite a crowd. Okay, and... thanks. Uh, you can bring me my coffee now. Okay. Miss Waitress. Uh, yes, sir. I wonder whether you could help me out. Huh? I think I know that man sitting over there, but I can't remember his name. Well, that's funny. What? What's funny? Oh, he just asked me about you. He what? He just asked about you. He just Here, me... here's a dollar. Forget that I said well, anything, you get it? Yeah. Forget it. But, oh, what's gotten into him? Oh, well, takes all kinds to make well. Yeah. What did he say to you? The man that was sitting there? Yes, yes. The one I asked you about a minute ago. Well, oh, he asked me the same thing you did. Who I was? Yeah, that's right. Thanks. Thanks very much. Pretty gruesome business, the Bradford case. What? Oh, I'm sorry if I startled you. I noticed you were reading about the Nancy Bradford murder. Oh, no, I... no, no. I, I wasn't startled. I uh, just didn't hear you coming. Uh, cigarette? No, thanks. I stick to this old pipe. Easier on the nerves. Light? Thanks. Thank you. My name is Doyle. I noticed you in the hotel dining room at lunch. You just arrived? Yes, I thought I'd get away from New York over the holidays. I need the rest. I'm a radio writer. What, you mean love that soap? No, no. I write dramatic shows. The agency handles the commercials. Radio? Oh, well, then perhaps you knew Nancy Bradford. I understand she did a lot of radio acting. That's why you were so interested in the newspaper account of the murder, hmm? I never happened to meet her. Oh. Uh, I was going out on the lake to try to catch a few bass. I rented one of the rowboats. It's pretty sunny, but there's some shady spots along the shore. Care to join me? Uh, what'd you say your name was? I didn't say. But it's Hartman, Jerry Hartman. Well, what do you say, Hartman? Care to come along? Well, I, uh, I don't know. I've always felt kind of strange about boats. I uh, don't swim. Well, don't worry. I swim very well. What about it? We probably won't catch anything anyway. I just thought a little company. But uh, you feel like being alone. No, no, I... Uh... I think I'd like it. Good. The boat's tied up at the end of the dock there. All right, let's go. There it is. I've got tackle and bait for two. If we get thirsty, I've got a thermos of iced tea. You care for anything stronger? I've uh, got a pint. No, thanks. I don't drink. What? And you in the radio business? <laughs> Maybe that's why. I'm on my second ulcer now. Uh, radio's occupational disease, huh? <laughs> well, step in. Thanks. Set? Yeah. Okay, here I come. Now I reach over and unhook the chain. I'll roll. Right? Well, there we go. Okay. When you get tired, I'll take over the oars. <laughs> I'm not as fat as you think. A lot of it's muscle. <laughs> you know, it seems impossible that he could have got away without leaving a clear trail. What? Who could have gotten away from what? The, uh, Bradford murderer. Oh. I've, uh, toyed with the idea that... The man with the blue glasses wasn't the murderer at all. No. Now, look, suppose you were a friend of Nancy Bradford's and you went upstairs and walked into that shambles. What would you do? My impulse would be to get away, not to be involved. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That couldn't have been the way it was. Why not? Well, he spoke to her on the house phone. It said so in the paper. 
The doorman heard him say, hello, darling, it's me, and he went right up. He must have been alive then, you see. Maybe the man in the glasses was bluffing. No, no, and even if he was bluffing, then he was involved anyway. Yeah, it must have been that guy, all right. Only the description of him isn't any use. He wouldn't wear those blue glasses again. You can thank on that. I guess you're right. And those pine needles. Yeah? What about them? Well, he must have come from someplace where he'd walked in pine needles. They stuck to his shoes or maybe to the bottom of his trousers. Plenty of pine trees around here. That's <laughs> a pleasant idea. The Bradford murderer may have been around here all the time. I've been vacationing. That's quite possible. Why are you staring at me? You know, I was just thinking that it's odd that your hair is so bleached by the sun, and yet your face isn't the least bit sunburned. It isn't bleached. That's its natural color. Is that so? Uh, what were you saying about the murderer being near here? Oh, well, I I, uh, I didn't say he definitely was near here. I, I just said it's possible. Oh, sure, sure it's possible. Anything is possible. Yeah. And then there's the brooch. What brooch? Nancy Bradford's brooch. It was found in a path in the woods here. Some local kid picked it up, turned it over to the cops. They found it here? That's right, a day or two after the murder. How do you know that? What? Huh? Well, I... Well, I don't know. I... Yes, I read it somewhere. That's funny. I thought I'd read everything about the case, and I never saw anything about the brooch. Well, I must have read it somewhere. I wouldn't have any other way of knowing. No. No, I suppose not. You'd think if they found the brooch, the place would be swarming with detectives. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe it is. They wouldn't necessarily come out in the open for fear of scaring off their man. Yeah. I suppose they would handle it that way. Since they have no way of identifying the man, they just lie low and wait until he made a mistake. What kind of a mistake? I don't know. Probably they don't know either. They just wait and hope. This fishing business is overrated. We've been here for 20 minutes already. Well, you got to be patient when you're fishing, Hartman. Say, you wouldn't kid me about being a radio writer, would you? Well, uh, it's a secret. But I'm really a junior G-man. <laughs> uh, say, Hartman, how would you go about solving the Bradford case if you were a detective? Well, the doorman's description wouldn't help much. But all you'd have to go on from a physical side is that the murderer's extremely strong. He'd have to be to do the beating job he did on that poor woman. Not necessarily. I believe it's a medical fact that people who are worked into a homicidal rage show evidence of strength far beyond their normal capacity. Something to do with the adrenal glands. Really? I wouldn't know about that. Hey, looks like you had something. Yep, so it does. Grab that net and get him when I'm playing up close. Okay. Hey, it's putting up a little fight. Yeah. Rock bass usually do. There. Get him. Yeah, got him. All right, dump him on the floor of the boat. Okay. Hey, look at him. He's all over the place. I'll soon stop that. Hand me that stick. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That did it. Oh, what's the matter, Hartman? Nothing, nothing, nothing. You're, you're upset. The way I subdued the fish. Forget it. They don't feel anything. Cold-blooded. Nice fish. We'll have them for dinner tonight. You were saying, Hartman, you'd expect to see some evidence of a cruel streak in the man you'd be looking for if you were a detective. Did I say cruel streak? Well, sure you did. Or maybe it was the papers. Anyway, don't you think you'd look for that? Yeah. Yeah, I think you could expect that. 
Not a nice guy to find yourself alone with. No, not nice at all. Uh oh. Looks like a storm coming up. See how dark it's getting? Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, maybe we better think about getting back. Yeah, huh? I guess so. Think we can make the hotel before it breaks? Well, we can try. Here, I'll take in the lines and get things organized. You pull up the anchor and I'll start rowing. Okay. We better hurry. I just felt a drop of rain. Pull the anchor up. Seems to be caught on something. I can't budge it. All right, let me take a whack at it. Now, let me have it. You've got to put your back into it. There we are. Ah. See how easy it is if you got a muscle or two? Yeah, I see. Well, uh, we'd better hurry. Won't be long now. <laughs> What's so funny? Of course, the murderer would be smarter than that. Smarter than what? To show his strength, since that's what the police are looking for. Oh. Now, if I were the murderer, I'd have done what you did. What I did? Demonstrate how weak I was. Too weak to lift an anchor. I see. Yes, that would be the clever thing. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the anchor wasn't stuck very tight. I made it look tougher than it was. Why? Just a gag, Hartman. The idea amuses me. What idea? Oh, that we're both wondering a little bit about each other. Oh, we're in for a soaking, all right. Say... Do you ever wear tinted sunglasses, Hartman? Most blondes suffer from bright sunshine. Wrong pigmentation. Look, Doyle, I don't think this gag of yours is very funny. I wish you'd cut it out. Sorry. I hope you don't mind getting soaked. It's really starting to come down good. I've been wet. Scared, Hartman? No, I'm not scared. I just don't like thunderstorms. I never did. Must be a bit like what happened to the Bradford murderer. What do you mean? Oh, a calm, sunny day, and then the wrath of God. Yeah, then the wrath of God. Why do you suppose he did it, Hartman? Nancy Bradford was a beautiful woman. Young, desirable. Some people can't stand treachery. What did you say? I said some people can't stand treachery. Treachery? That's the way some men would look at a turn down. Ah, maybe they would, Hartman. <laughs> All right. What's the joke now, Doyle? Your hair. My hair? What about it? No, oh, help me, Hartman. I thought the color had run when it got wet. I thought it was dyed. Well, it's not. Yeah, I can see that now. I see a lot of things now. Hartman, we'll be safe in the hotel. Yeah, right behind you. Come on. Oh, pretty wet. What do you say to a brandy? No, no thanks. I never drink. You never drink. You said that. But after that soaking, you should have something for medicinal purposes. Ah, right? <laughs> yeah, you see, you're catching cold. Yeah. Well, I got a bottle of brandy. Good stuff in my room. Come on. Well, I'd uh, better change my clothes first. <laughs> You'll die of pneumonia before you do. Look, this is my room right here. Get a good slug of brandy in you first. It'll save your life. What do you say? <laughs> I say okay. Fine. Step in. Thank you. There's the bottle on top of the dresser. Pour yourself a drink. I want to get the shower running in the bathroom. It takes forever to warm up. Be with you in a minute. Yeah, sure. These summer hotels are all the same. Never enough hot water. That's right. Take your time. Give me time to look around. I thought so. What? Get your hands up. And turn around, Hartman. I've got a gun. No, keep your hands up. That's right. Don't stop reaching. I had a feeling you'd snoop if you had the chance. That's why I gave you the chance. Find anything interesting in the bureau drawer? So you're the Bradford murderer. It won't work, Hartman. It won't work. You can't get away with it by accusing me. I know you're the Bradford murderer. <laughs> No, 
Doyle, you're the killer, not me. I knew it when I saw the way you beat that fish with that stick. When I saw you pull up that anchor and when you kept probing and probing to find out who I was. I knew it the way you reacted to my telling you about the brooch. It won't work, Hartman. Only two people could have known about the brooch. It wasn't in the papers. The murderer or a cop. That's right, Hartman. All right, how do you explain these torn and mutilated pictures of Nancy Bradford in your bureau drawer? They came from Nancy Bradford's apartment. So you had to destroy even the symbols of Nancy Bradford. You must have hated her, Hartman. No, it was you who hated her. Even after you murdered her, you had to go on destroying everything that reminded you of it. You ought to know. You ought to know how the murderer felt. You even told me some men would think of a turndown as treachery. It was you, Doyle. You've been hanging around this place because you lost the brooch. You didn't know whether it had been found or not. No one knew for certain but the police. That's right. No one knew but the police. And it was you who wanted to know for sure if it had been found. You were trying to find out for me because you decided that I was a cop looking for you. No. Well, you were right. I was looking for you. <laughs> I'll bet the pretense that you weren't strong enough to lift the anchor. Your pretended squeamishness when I beat the fish with the club. It matched the description of the killer, Doyle. Your action. Don't you understand? I did that on purpose just to see how you'd behave. You're a good actor, Hartman. You've been in the radio and theater business. You knew how easy it'd be to fool the doorman at Nancy Bradford's apartment. Look, look, look. Why go on with this, Doyle? Drop your gun. You can't get away with it. Now make a move, Hartman. Stay right where you are. Let's cut the kidding. Hartman, I warn you. Are you... Doyle. Doyle. Well, Hartman, looks like I won. Oh. You've killed him. He's dead. Oh, Bert! Bert! Come here! Let go. Look. There, on the floor. Is he dead? Yep. His name was Hartman. He was the Bradford murderer. I'd been looking for him. Special assignment. Yeah, special assignment. Special assignment for murder, you crazy killer. What's the meaning of this? Why'd you hit him? Mr. Doyle's an officer. Officer? Hartman was the officer. The plainclothes detective I told you about. Doyle's the Bradford murderer. Bert, did, uh, did Doyle confess? Yeah, the DA's up there in the room with him right now. Should have heard him boast about that game of wits him and Hartman played in that boat. Well, why'd he kill Nancy Bradford? He was her first husband, a, how did the DA say it, a paranoid killer. Uh, that means crazy, huh? Yeah. She'd been hiding from him, changed her name, remarried. Then Doyle showed up. Seemed all right, wanted to see her to apologize for all the trouble he caused her. The rat. Yeah, you know the rest. Doyle's surrounded by cops and reporters, and Hartman is laying in Gormley's undertaking parlor. All by himself. Poor fella. Yeah. Pop, get out that bottle of yours. I need a drink. And that brings down the final curtain on Challenge to the Listener, starring Richard Widmark and Everett Sloan. Tonight's performance in your mystery playhouse. Until next time, please, this is Hunter Galloway closing the doors of your mystery playhouse and reminding you to sleep. Good night. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. <laughs> 